Hello and welcome to today's Sunday School session for Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church here in Seattle, Washington. I'm Minister Kelly Coleman. I'm proud and privileged to be with you today on behalf of our senior pastor, Robert L. Manaway Sr., and our co-superintendent, Minister Lynn Roberts. Today we're going to be talking about justice, judges, and priests and their roles. Uh, definitely relevant in this time and era where we're always talking about the law and the repercussions. We'll be coming from the 16th chapter of Deuteronomy, uh, verses 18 through 20, as well as the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 13. So getting excited to, to move forward with you. But before that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate your word and study. Be with us, shape our minds and thoughts as we hear, as we think, as we are evaluating and applying to our lives. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, let's go ahead and move forward. Today's lesson is Justice, Judges, and Priests from Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, verses 18 through 20, and chapter 17, verses 18, excuse me, verses 8 through 13. As we go through our text today, we want to make sure for our discussion that we're able to overview the key points, uh, especially for Moses as he lays out this foundation for uh, the rule and the role of the judge and how they work with the priest. I will understand those key points and takeaways as a concluding uh, measure for our lesson to move forward. When you think about the book of Deuteronomy, this is the final book of the Pentateuch written by Moses. Uh, this is covering a, approximately two years while the children of Israel were in the geographical location of Moab. The messaging here was not only uh, looking at the backward or looking back at and reflecting on where the children have come, meaning the children of Israel, but more specifically looking inward and establishing late in his life those critical beliefs, principles, and laws for the people that they would be able to abide uh, well beyond uh, his life. So this is where we are in the book of Deuteronomy, also uh, with Moses. Now, while on the verge of this promised land of Kadesh Barnea, the Israelites believed the negative report from the 10 spies about the land and refused to enter Canaan. So this is the situation. Now, as a result of that, God declared that they would wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and during that time, every one over 19 years old would die. Now, 40 years later, a few new generations of Israelites were once again on the border of the promised land ready to enter. However, before they could enter the land, in a three-part message for his new generation, Moses reviewed the previous 40 years, including the laws that God had given to the previous generation. The new generation needed to hear God's law for themselves. The text this week comes from chapters 16 and 17 in Moses' second message. Focuses on how the leaders of Israel, particularly the judges and priests, were to advocate for the people and make sure that everyone received justice. Now, God had led his people out of Egypt and across the great Sinai Desert after wandering for 40 years on a journey that should have taken 11 days. The Israelites now stood ready to enter the promised land. But before they continued, while camped in Moab, east of the Jordan River, Moses had some important words for them to prepare them for entering the promised land. He delivered his, delivered his message in three parts. First message, he reviewed uh, where they come from, what God had done for them through his mighty acts. The second, gave the people principles or godly living and the results of obeying and disobeying God. Finally, the third, call to Israel to be committed to God. So our lesson takes place today in the second message uh, from Moses. As we are looking at the text, it reads as follows. Judges and officers shall make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee through thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons neither take a gift for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous that which is altogether just thou shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the lord thy god giveth thee 
If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, plea and plea, stroke and stroke, be matters of controversy within thy gates, then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge thou shalt be in those days and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that which place the Lord shall choose, shall show thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all they that they inform thee. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence, which they shall show thee to the right hand, nor to the left. And the man will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister therefore before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. Now, as we begin to look at the lesson for today, there are some key points that we really want to drive. We'll begin here with the passage of the 18th through 20th verses of chapter 16. Chapter 16 verses 18 through 20 lay out the framework or at least the criteria upon which judges should be selected, highlighting the importance of that role with the people of Israel at this time in their life and journey. One, I really laid out the fact that the principles of that individual have to be strong. They've got to be trustworthy. They have to be able to see things objectively and be objective in their decision making. No uh, weighing to the right or to the left, no subjectivity. They should be able to be fair and moving forward. We also know that they should be free of any bribes because we know as bribes and as opinions and as influence enters to the role of judging, then that's where we begin to tilt from justice, objective justice to corruption or inadequacies in the system based on bias. And so Moses was keen on trustworthy individual, but also that individual must adhere to a common set of principles and to ensure that justice itself was uh, fair and, and was uh, aligned with the, not only the will of God, but that consistency gave trust from the people that when decisions were brought to them, that those orders those decisions, those judgments could be followed. We also know that as the, the judges or as the decisions were rendered, our essence here or the goal was that once uh, the decision was there, it was to be followed. Uh, once the decision was made known, the people were to adhere to that. It talks about this presumptuous man that just feels that he can do his own thing after that judgment. No, there were swift penalties to judgment or excuse me, disobeying the decision of the judge, uh, being able to uh, presume or go above and beyond, usually uh, cause of death, right? It was the sentence uh, of disobeying that final judgment. In the same, judges were held to a high account as well in that if they were found not to follow or if they were found to go against those principles, death was also um, on uh, the list of punishments for them. And so the judge had to be objective, had to be fair, take no bribe as we move forward. The second half of our passage is in the 8 through 13 verses of chapter 17. Now, if there arise a matter too hard for the in judgment between blood and blood, plea and plea, stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that the, shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall show thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all they inform thee. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priests that standeth to minister 
there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall fear, excuse me, shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. Now Moses was well aware of the fact that there would be some complexity and that all decisions could not be rendered by each and every judge that was appointed at the gates, so at each of these cities. So established a hierarchy, if you will, where you would have a high judge, and then you would also have the priest. And if those decisions that were at the gates in those local areas uh, could not be resolved, there was that system that upper court, if you will, uh, to, to make those final decisions or to help. Some of those cases or situations that Moses called out, one was uh, blood for blood, so murder, um, plea for plea, so lawsuits between folks, but then also stroke for stroke, so assault and battery. So there was some complexity that sometimes caused multiple individuals uh, with areas or decisions or facts that were kind of in the gray that they had to bring up and, and escalate. And those were the cases that were handled by the judge, the, the high judge or the, the priest. Now recall back in Exodus, uh, that hierarchy was that when people, the families could not address their, their issues on their own, they brought them to Moses. Well, now Moses is on uh, in his twilight years where he's moving from from his evening to his morning. So he's he's laying all of this out because he knows that he won't be able to 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 move on uh, that much further. So the system that he's established uh, was one that if everyone had integrity, if everyone was able to uh, to the best of their abilities, uh, render judgment, but then also bring it to that higher court, if you will, uh, which consisted of the priest as well as the judge then those decisions, there would be some order there. And then once again, when you talk about this presumptuous man, that it was to be followed, those decisions, when they were rendered, those were final. And so all efforts had to be made to align to those decisions and to obey those decisions. Very stiff penalty, i.e. death, for those who would presumptu or presume to just go beyond and to simply decide to neglect uh, what that decision was. Now, this is very important for us because we know that the judges at each of the gates, I meaning all the seasons, or excuse me, cities, uh, their, their knowledge would, their experience would vary. And so at, at times you could not expect all of them to be able to rule consistently and that help was needed. So the established higher judge and priest model here gives them that relief valve that if those decisions were definitely too tough, if there was not clarity in the principles or the framework upon which decisions were made, then that higher court, meaning that the judge and the priest would be seeking God uh, and, and really making sure that as they uh, were rendering those decisions, that they were considered uh, final as they were pushing forth. Now, the integrity still had to be there. The uh, willingness to obey and to look and, and see things objectively and fairly were to uh, still be in place. And so the system is there to, to help and to relieve, but we also know that um, those still common principles and framework had to remain intact as we move forward. The main point is this, as Christians, as children of God, we're called to follow the law, to obey the law. Now, regardless of your country, regardless of um, those known issues, that's our call, right? Not only to, to follow the word of God, but wherever we are as civilians to ensure that we align and that we are following out to the best of our abilities, not only principles, but the letter of the law. Now, we know that there are some laws that just don't make sense and don't align to our principles, but we are called whenever possible to, to make sure that we're following the laws and that we're aligning to the word of God. Now, we know that there are some laws that will require us to, to fight, to influence, to share, to work with our leadership to ensure that those laws are changed. But until they are to the best of our abilities, we wanna make sure that we are honoring God by honoring the law. Once again, not 
saying that all laws are good, should be followed in absolute, but we're in principle to follow the law. Life gets a lot easier when you follow the law. Another key lesson here is that within disobedience, disobedience to the law is seen as rebellion because the decisions are coming from God or those that were appointed to lead. And so this rebellious activity of being presumptuous led to death, right? It was, it was absolute there. And so we want to make sure that there's not only clarity, but an understanding of the seriousness and the importance of following the law. Now let's go to our final principles for today. Practical points from today's lesson. God has ordained the powers that rule over us and they are expected to do it justly and fairly. Our leaders are called to make fair and just decisions without being partial or showing favoritism. Sometimes judges find it difficult to rule in some cases, so they would be wise to seek help. When judges make right and fair decisions, it behooves us to abide by their rulings. There will always be negative results when we act presumptuously and refuse to abide by fair judicial rulings. As human beings, and certainly as Christians, we have the duty to work for justice for everyone. We're obligated by God's word and the Lord himself to seek out just leaders who will make just and fair decisions. Although the laws given in today's lesson are given particularly to Israel, the principles behind them are the same for us today. May we take the time to make sure that the leaders we choose as well as we ourselves know the difference between justice and injustice and demonstrate it in our lives. A critical lesson and reminder of our civil responsibilities of selecting uh, objective and fair judges, but then also to our lives, the willingness and our call and invitation to, to follow the law, to be individuals of character, objective, who are fair and who are obedient. That's the, the message for today. That's our should be our daily message and our daily call as we are interacting and having to make decisions, but then also having to follow rules, be it at home, work, church, and even in society. So stay encouraged with that as we move forward. Now let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity and a privilege to represent you in all that we do as we are seen in, in modes of obedience, and reflection with solid principles continue to strengthen us that others may see the light in us through the works that you've called us to do. Now be with our, our leadership, Lord, be with our country leadership, be with each other that we may move and represent you in all that we do. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, once again, on behalf of our senior pastor, Robert L. Manaway Sr., our co-church superintendent, Minister Lynn Roberts, be well, get the most out of today. Remember our call and be invited uh, to, to ensure that we are aligning to the laws and we'll all be the better for it. Talk to you soon. May God's peace be with you all.